morning guys, uh, it's Lisa here. I just thought I'd come and do um, a little bit of a product review for you today. Whilst I was on um, Lakeside and Needle Crafts website uh, a couple of weeks ago, just ordering some DMC um, floss, I needed to stock up on some needles. So I was just generally having a look. I tend to use at the minute either either the Boeing needles or the John James Petites but I was in the John James section and I came across these double-ended quick stitch needles and I thought hmm so they were priced at $1.99 and I thought oh gosh I'm gonna have a little look and, and see <laughs> if they really do make you stitch quick so um, just to, on the back here there's a little bit of information so it basically talks about how you can stitch even faster than ever and it talks about using a hands-free frame which I tend to stitch with anyway keeping one hand above your work and the other hand below at all times stitch straight up and down through your fabric without turning the needle around keeping the thread over a finger if necessary to keep it taut and prevent from twisting and be sure to hold the needle closed but not on the eye of the needle so obviously you don't want it to unthread on yourself but I, I was thinking um, obviously about the manoeuvring of your hands when you stitch and the railroading method which I uploaded um, my technique for railroading finita stitches a little while ago and I'll put the link for that particular upload in the comments box below but I'm wondering whether or not the principle of how these needles work would negate the need for you to railroad so with that in mind what I thought I would do is get my Mirabilia Persephone out and start to work on her a little bit to see what my first impressions of these needles actually are. So at the moment and when I bought these Lakeside um, needle crafts only had size 24 needles available. I'm sure you'll be able to get them potentially in different sizes. These probably are a little bit bigger and thicker than I would normally want to stitch. I tend to go for 26s for um, mirrors on sort of 28, 32 count and then for obviously the, the one I'm doing like the smaller count, the, the one over one on my um, heaven and earth I would tend to go for a 28 so they're a little bit bigger and chunkier than I would normally stitch with but I, I'm thinking on a 32 count um, Murano these, these should be fine to at least have a go with and see what I think so I'm going to go and get my needlework set up and I will be back in a moment I'll see you soon take care for now okay so I've taken one of the needles out and I got a bit of a surprise to be honest when I took it out. I don't know whether or not you can see here the actual eye of the needle is in the middle. Um, <laughs> I don't know where I was expecting it to be um, but not there. So um, so yeah I'm gonna just get into position and I'll be right back and we'll thread this needle together and, and see how we get on. There we are so I've got my um, cross stitch on my knee now on my El Bessie stand as you can see and I'm just working on this gorgeous dark teal green um, so I've, what I've done is I've just taken this off the needle that I was currently working on just a standard needle and I'm just gonna take the thread and thread it <laughs> through the center of the needle which feels so alien um, Sorry, I just uh, I should have trimmed the end, but my scissors are in the other room because I was working on steam heart last night. So, <laughs> okay, um, right. I was going to zoom you in a little tiny bit, um, just so you'll be still able to see the principle of the needle. So, so let's see. So I always stitch with my right hand on top and my left hand underneath. Um, how many stitches do I need to make first? That's probably more important than, <laughs> than anything else <laughs> before I go um, Yeah, I'm going all the way over to the edge anyway, so that's fine. So it's a straight down maneuver Oh gosh, it feels really really weird In a minute, let's pull that through 
and a straight off. I can see what they mean about keeping an eye on that thread in the middle. Go down. Oh, do you know what? Actually, in all fairness, I think it splits the thread out. Because it's it's not going to twist in the way that it would normally. I'm going to zoom you in a little bit closer in a moment. Do you know what? You're not going to have to railroad for your stitches with this. I'm always only bothered about the top leg of them anyway because that's primarily what you see. But because you're not, I'm literally just moving my hand up and down like a sewing machine kind of action up down and I'm just grabbing that with my hand underneath and then I'm just literally not even maneuvering it and I'm pushing it back down again right I'm going to zoom you in now so you can see how these stitches are laying I'm hoping you'll be able to see this So you can already see this, this, the threads are, are actually separated because there's been no twisting of the needle going on. Because when you, when you think about it, when you're stitching, what your thread is going through in terms of passing and up and round and round like that kind of manoeuvre, it's, it's surprising how it twists. And I've noticed when I'm working with one strand of DMC how the ply unravels. I don't know whether any of you have noticed that in particular, you can see it more when you're doing one strand. So on my steam heart, I can see how the ply unravels and I end up, ended up with like straight like threads. That is really, really surprising because you can see in terms, I, I, I've railroaded every top leg of every stitch on this piece so far and now when you look right next to this stitch yeah it's taken me a bit of getting used to the needle but it looks like they've been railroaded I'm actually gobsmacked you know <laughs> I'm really surprised yes I'm stitching an awful lot slower than I would but it's just because I'm getting used to a needle that's much longer to work with as I said earlier I've been stitching a lot with the the John James Petites so you can see let me just do a needle size comparison for you um, as to what I've been stitching with and what I'm currently stitching with so I mean it's like a javelin <laughs> in comparison to the to the tiny petite that I've been working with but in all fairness, I think once you get to grips with the actual needle itself, um, I think you would be motoring because you're not having to make sure that you are, because obviously when you're railroading, you're going through, like you're splitting off the thread like that and then stitching through it but this needle does it automatically for you because you can see how the threads are just laying because you're not twisting the needle you just literally all I'm doing is just pushing it through like a sewing machine just up and down it's there's no other maneuvering going on with this so you can see already the the threads are just lined up no twists and just ready to go through again like that that's really clever. I like this. I like this a lot and I'm going to use it. I'll use them in my mirrors because they're really absolutely fine and there's nothing wrong with the the size either. I didn't know whether or not a 24 would be too big for the fabric count but it's really not. It really isn't at all because this is going to work out as like a 16 count, it's 32, 32 count Murano this one and this is working fine 
Yeah, I really like it. I think um, I think it's a it's a really cool idea, and I will be incorporating this into my everyday working because if it produces stitches as neat as that, without me having to railroad everything, which <laughs> you know while you're getting used to the technique does require a bit more concentration but obviously I do it as second nature now I think probably um, this needle over time will allow me to you, you know just it will be it'll become second nature as well working with a longer needle uh, it's just going to take a bit of practice but you know I think it's um, I think it's really interesting and I'm going to keep using it and I will no doubt in my monthly update give you an opinion on you know as I've stitched more with it because over the next week or so these are you know these smaller pieces well not that Persephone small but they're going to get a little bit more loving uh, I'm probably going to head across potentially to the static next week so I take these pieces with me on the on the lap stands because they're just easier than trying to take the big um, the big frames across. So so yeah, I will let you know how I get on with this, and I'll catch you in my monthly update. Catch you soon. Bye.